Hey, what's going on, guys? We're back with the next part of our learning C# -sharp tutorial series, and today we're going to be um, covering some sort of uh, saving system, so we can go ahead and save our progress. Um, now, originally, it was going to be you know some sort of serialized data, some sort of class where we can load in all this this information and save it to a file. Um, however, uh, an easier way we can do it after thinking about it is using our player preferences, which basically does the same thing. It's just a, a class that uh, Unity has provided for us. It's not any sort of uh, encoded or secure data. It's still saved to the hard drive. It's just uh, a fancy way of doing it for us. And it, because it's uh, it's based on strings, integers, and floats, we can go ahead and serialize it or encode it if we would like to. But to keep things simple, I'm going to go ahead and um, show you guys how I would want to go ahead and do this. So, um, before we do anything, I'm going to go ahead and create a utility class. And we're going to call this uh, Save Manager. Um, and he does not need to be a mono behavior. In fact, um, we can go ahead, it doesn't make much of a difference, but we can go ahead and make him a static class, which means that he cannot be an object, he can only be referenced as a static member. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and make a public static void uh, save mission. Taking in a mission called mission, um, uh, and then we'll do a mission status called status. Okay, um, and then one other thing we're going to do is make a public static. Um, mission array get um, get available missions okay um, before we can go ahead and flesh out these methods we're going to go ahead and actually create this mission status and because it's going to be something so simple and so only related to this class or to the save manager we can go ahead and create it within the same file even though it's within the save manager.cs it is not considered part of the save manager class because that's only what's inside of these brackets here so this could be considered a separate file technically if we just moved it it makes no difference because it's not part of this save manager class um, so make this public enum uh, call it mission status and we're gonna do uh, completed available um, locked and those are the three statuses we need and then it's done so that, that's how simple it is it's just why I didn't want to create a new file which has been a little waste so um, the save mission is definitely going to be a lot easier than our uh, get available mission so we'll go ahead and flush this one out first um, we'll do a player prefs dot save uh, not save dot set whoops set string um, and we'll call it mission plus mission dot name um, comma uh, status dot to string okay so what this does is uh, the boy player preferences work is we put in a string for the basically it's a dictionary for the uh, reference ID and then the the key so what this will do is it'll create in a database uh, I'm not sure entirely what the structure is like I haven't opened it myself but if I were to do this I would probably do um, some sort of comma separated or not comma maybe uh, maybe a, a line separated system where we have the key here with we'll call it mission plus the mission's name and then the key will be the status of the mission and then we can go ahead and reference this later okay um, and then that's that we've already we've gone ahead and saved this this mission here 
Next, we'll want to be able to get the available missions, so we'll do... Um, actually, we're going to have to take in the mission array of missions to check. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to take in a... Um, a whoops a boolean array of or rather we'll do mission status array like that and then the other scripts can handle what they want to do based on the status and obviously for the uh, world map manager it'll uh, manage whether the mission is visible or not um, this way it's generic we can have any script do stuff with this mission status enumeration um, so we'll make it for each and we'll do for each mission um, in missions um, we'll do um, string temp equals player prefs dot get string mission plus m dot name that should look familiar to what we did above um, and then you'll notice we can just close it parentheses here but however we have if we put in a comma we have an overload for the default value and what we're going to do for the default is locked so if no mission has been saved it should automatically refer back to locked which is this guy and you'll notice it's a string um, we'll, we'll talk about this in a little bit okay um, and then we're going to go ahead and, and we're going to use a list just to make it easier A list of mission status statuses. And we're gonna have to import this system dot collections dot generic. So we'll do statuses dot add um, string to status temp, and then we're just gonna return statuses dot to array because the return type is a an array not a list and that's just automatically converts it for us uh, next we're just going to go ahead and create this m method here and what it's going to be is a simple switch statement I don't think we've talked about talked about this before um, uh, we may have actually I'm not sure but I'm going to go ahead and review it anyways um, a switch statement is basically a handy dandy uh, functionality that will allow us to set up a, a nice little if um, system. Uh, so what we'll do is, oops, case um, locked. Then we're going to go ahead, and I, this does feel familiar. I think we have talked about it, so this should only be review. Uh, we're going to return mission status dot locked. We'll do case. Uh, completed we'll turn mission status dot completed uh, case available to return mission status dot available in fact actually now that I think about it um, we shouldn't even need these breaks here because return will end the method where it is normally you would get an error because we need this um, this each case to be to have a break but because return is um, better than a break it'll actually end the entire method uh, works fine and you'll notice we have this red line here because it says not all code paths return a value that just means that we could run this and in some instance nothing could get returned and we need something to be returned so we need what we need to do is make a default which means if anything else basically that's your else statement uh, we're going to return mission status dot locked so in case something fails somewhere um, just make it locked which shouldn't happen anywhere anyways um, because we're just returning a status dot two string and there's no way you know your code is gonna misspell something <laughs> so this shouldn't happen but by some rare change any any you know anywhere if something goes wrong return it as locked and we've actually gone and uh, flushed out this file it's now complete so we can go ahead and uh, save this and we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm going to stop the video and restart it because we're reaching my 10 minute limit here.
So the next thing we want to do is um, not in here. Um, not in here right now. And what we'll do is um, first we'll do the saving and then we'll do the loading on start. So right here where we have our turn mission completed here, what we'll do is um, save manager dot save mission um, taking in the well we're going to change this to a string okay and just to make it a little easier save mission passing in that p which is actually the uh, mission name i just got a little lazy with the naming here and then the mission status dot completed Okay, and then we're done here. Next, we have this turn mission available, and we'll just go ahead and do a uh, save manager. Oops, dot save mission. Uh, passing in that mission dot name, uh, and then the mission status dot available. Okay. Uh, and then what we're going to do is within our start function here, we're going to go ahead and call this. Um, we're going to remove this here where we turn on the first mission, and instead we're going to do um, load mission, or uh, rather, we'll call this initialize missions. And what this will do is we're going to do a um, mission status array statuses equals save manager dot get available missions uh, passing in these missions to check uh, next what we'll do is for each mission M in missions Uh, rather, um, because we need to access the iteration um, to match up the mission status with the mission, we need to use an index. So we'll do, use a for, and normally I use for each because they're faster um, than making this. But we'll go ahead and do it for this. Um, you'll notice I used the um, as the condition. Uh, index is less than the statuses dot length. We could use the missions dot length. Either way, it's going to return the same value because if we go to our get available missions, um, it returns the same uh, amount because we're, for every mission we're going to add a status. So whether or not um, we get the string or not, it'll default to locked if we don't find it. So it should always be the same size. Um, so next, what we'll do is. Um, uh, we'll do another. We'll do a switch statement just because I'm in the mood. We'll do switch statuses sub index. So this is the iteration uh, case mission status dot available. We'll do um, turn mission available, um, passing in the missions sub index. Then break. We'll make a case mission status dot uh, completed, or rather, um, whether we're completed or not, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to make a default for everything else. We're going to do uh, turn. Well, okay. Here's a better idea. Um, well, we'll do turn mission off. Because if you go ahead and check out our turn mission completed, um, it actually does the save mission as completed. Whereas if we do get one and it returns as locked, we don't want to mark that as completed. So um, this turn mission off will be generic for completed and for locked, where the icon is just turned off and uh, we don't have to worry about um, actually saving any sort of data. Passing in the missions sub index. Okay, and this guy is going to be really simple. We're just going to go ahead and 
uh, mission dot icon. Um, oh, not missions. Mission dot icon dot set active false. Okay. Um, and that's it. So let's go ahead and test this system out. Um, well, actually, just for time's sake, I'm going to end the video. I'm relatively sure. Well, okay, it'll load it up. If it took a long time, I wouldn't have done it. But um, if we go ahead and load this up, um, well, there's one more thing we have to keep in mind is that um, it'll default us to locked. So we do need to make a... Um, we'll make a... Okay, we'll save it for the next tutorial. This one's getting kind of lengthy.